We're on the cutting edge of technology and discovery. This coming January, a space shuttle will be launched carrying one of America's teachers. The shuttle flies like a commercial aircraft. Challenger, you are free to take off now. People around the world, including many school children, watched on the fateful day in 1986 as the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded live before our eyes. A new docuseries on Netflix, Challenger, The Final Flight, looks back at the tragedy from the perspective of engineers, officials, and the crew members' families. Stephen Luckert is one of the co-directors of the docuseries, and he joins us live. Steve, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, guys. Good morning. How, uh, how reckless was this mistake? Uh, reckless is a tough word to use, but I think there was a lot of warning signs over the years, and NASA created a culture where it just became okay, and it became okay, and over time, mm. that pattern led to a tragedy. Stephen, I saw the docuseries. I thought it was phenomenal. The one thing that struck me was William Lucas from NASA, and what he said, in hindsight, he said, looking back at it, he would still make the same decision based on the information he had, which is stunning to me just in terms of the evidence that you presented throughout. What did you think when he made that statement? Yeah, well, as a filmmaker, I wasn't there to judge. I was yeah. there to ask mm -hmm. questions, right? And, um, you know, I think years later, to see him sort of stick to his guns, so to speak, and hold his ground, I think just lets you know how complex of an issue it was. Right. Um, other people did show contrition and said that they wish they could have done it a different way. And I think if you watch the series, what he you know makes clear is that space travel is dangerous. Yeah. It's inherently dangerous. And I think we we lost sight of that in the 80s. Yeah, is it, of course it's dangerous. Is it more dangerous because of political pressure? It could be, yeah. I mean, and I think we're seeing that a lot today if you think about it. Um, you know, letting science uh, win the day and listening to reason is something that I think uh, our film spells out pretty clearly, and I think it's a cautionary tale. I was trying to put myself back in, in 1986. I was just a kid at the time, but I didn't realize that they were lifting off, what, every three to four months, a schedule that I, I can't even envision at, at this point. How much pressure, just in terms of meeting that schedule and getting and, and then getting a budget, how dependent were they on that? A lot. I mean, NASA is a government agency that depends on billions and, and trillions, if you think about it, dollars over the years. And they had a roadmap that they'd sold to Congress. And that roadmap meant that over time they needed to ramp up. Every year they had to launch more and more shuttles. And so what they were doing was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that ultimately that's what caught up with them. Um, were there any who felt like there should have been more significant legal fallout for whether it's private contractors or the, or the government? There were, and there were lawsuits that went on for years, uh, which we don't cover too much in the film. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, you know, people were ready to move on. Uh, and NASA did learn its lessons. Uh, there was never another uh, issue with the solid rocket booster for the rest of uh, the shuttle's, you know, existence until 2011. And I think that speaks volumes about the sort of seriousness that NASA took uh, to this, uh, to heart about this issue. When, you, oh, sorry, go no, ahead. No, go ahead. You, you referred to, to this a, a little bit. The marketing has always been important to the space program. And I'm wondering, you know, after the death of this teacher, uh, was there any, has there been any rethinking of that kind of thing? It's a good question for NASA, but I mean, I think, I think yes and no. I mean, I think we, we obviously did not see another civilian go into space uh, so quickly, right? Right. Um, ultimately, uh, they did send a teacher up, Barbara Morgan, who you just saw on the screen, uh, year, went years later, um, but she trained as a full-time astronaut mm. and she was no longer a civilian. And I think that speaks volumes about just uh, what our vision of space travel was. We, we really thought in the 80s that anyone would get to go yeah. uh, and that it would be like an airplane because mm. it looked like an enormous airplane. And that's just not the case. Space travel is still very difficult, very hard, yeah. and we have to give it its due respect. Was there any hesitation on behalf of some of the engineers involved um, that uh, maybe perhaps they didn't want to talk about what had happened, not relive what had happened? Absolutely. We had many, many conversations. Uh, some people took, you know, three, four hours of, you know, yeah. multiple phone conversations just to, I think, tell them 
with you know the utmost sincerity what our vision was for the project, why we weren't out to crucify anyone, including NASA. We really just came asking questions like you. I was a school child at the time, mm -hmm. so I, I came bringing nothing with me except just curiosity, and I think that, that extended through our entire team. We ultimately just wanted to unpack and understand this moment in time, and who better than the people who lived it themselves. All right. Well, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Challenger, the final flight, streaming now on Netflix. Have a great weekend, Steve. Thanks.